So I'm doing a wrap up of my batch rocket mass heater build and the final product or the almost the final product is here before us which is has a a door on it and a six foot tall masonry bell the the batch box where the firewood goes is is shown right here in front of us uh, with the door propped up next to it so let me take you through the whole thing and and show it to you uh, actually what I really want to show you next is the is a movie of it what stove lives the jury rigged door because the power outage kind of caught me by surprise So what we are seeing there is uh, I was looking down at the bottom of this door and you can see that there was a pretty good draft coming in um, and so it, it, we're, we're bringing in sufficient oxygen for good combustion. But let me take you through this story in, in some steps. So this is my old 55-gallon uh, barrel stacked wood stove that I'd used for 15 years. And the fact that it was still in good shape after 15 years indicates that the fire temperatures never really got up hot enough to, to damage the steel. And so it inherently was never going to get to good efficiencies. It was not bad, but it, it, uh, I'm looking to improve this. Also, you notice the sheet metal around it. Uh, this is my basement, and so the heat was needing to go upstairs and so the sheet metal around it helped to direct or force the hot air to go up through vents in the uh, ceiling overhead. Another view of the, of the back side of the sheet metal enclosure and then without the sheet metal what it was looking like and then it also shows the connection to a the chimney right there. And another view of the connection back over to the chimney. This ended up being a pretty good arrangement for a the 55 gallon barrel because the chimney connection was down just a little on the barrel and so the smoke would go to the top and then have to cool just a little bit to go down into it. Now it also meant that this thing was a little bit it, it didn't have a real strong draft and so I had to kind of uh, watch opening the door. I couldn't just open it indiscriminately because smoke would start to come out. So I got I took three truckloads of bricks. To, I needed about a thousand of these red bricks uh, for this project and so there's three truckloads to get them over there. Sketched out the thing on the on the ground and then started piling up the the bricks here to create this thing. The The wood board here was just really for me to, to hold my space uh, correctly for, to put the bricks on the sides and then to locate the end of it and then once once that was done uh, I finished. Um, also this little wooden arch here was to get the correct shape of the port yeah, so it was dimensionally the correct size. And I used fire bricks on the inside and then uh, as you'll see I added an extra layer on the outside for insulation. This little um, brick right here is my clean out port for the chimney and so I needed I wanted to leave it clear so that I could get back in there if needed uh, like every year or two to clean out the chimney and so that's that's really the reason why it's about 18 inches away from the walls for access to that also that allowed me to access the chimney port which is up about yeah so here's the chimney port shown stuff with newspapers so I had gotten to this point with my fire brick construction I had created the port at the back put a couple of bricks across that and then had a couple more bricks and then was going to be ultimately stacking all the red bricks on top of these and so I was concerned about wanting to have this back wall be strong enough that it could take a six foot tall stack of bricks on top of it without collapsing and, and so I, I, I did in fact I was encouraged to make this whole thing out of fire brick to, to have it all be strong and sturdy and last last a long time 
and just another view of construction. Uh, ended up covering the floor, but by the time we got done, it just had all sorts of droppings of sand on it, and so I finally ultimately decided that was going to be my my covering to protect the, the concrete on the inside of this. It probably had about an inch or so of, of, of sand and uh, clay mix on it. And then I started to put in the connection to the stove pipe. It needed to be up. Um, such that the air could come at this thing from all sides and so I, I didn't want to put it down on the ground because then that would uh, inhibit the air freely flowing into this and so I, I wanted to be up at least a couple bricks and I wasn't sure how thick my floor covering was going to be and so I went up, went up three bricks. And there's another view of the connection over to the chimney and then this just got filled in all around with with clay. Uh, here is the mostly, yeah, pretty much the completed uh, firebox. Uh, it has 45 degree slope sides to help the amp the coals slide to the center so that they can all combust rather than being isolated, you know, in, in remote corners of the firebox. So that helps promote a more uh, finish burn for the coals and then this this channel and the little pipe coming up here is my secondary air so the air goes in through the channel at the at the opening of the box and then comes up and it's coming up 90 degrees to the flow of the air so the smoke would be going over this way and then this is coming up and so there's a mixing that happens right here. In fact, there's it's mixing from several directions because the smoke is coming down and then this is coming up and so we're intentionally trying to create a mixing effect with the design of the port and this is uh, the, uh, this is not my design, uh, just following the really dimensions on the internet for the dispatch box masonry Rocks, rocket stove. Uh, and then we have an insulated riser behind it. So this is a one inch thick ceramic wool blanket uh, with just a, a 10 inch uh, steel metal duct. And then the insulation is ultimately, the, the duct is just to hold the shape. And, I'll, and I filled all around it with uh, uh, rock uh, perlite and clay. But I'll show you more. The 45 degree sides, I did go ahead and I have a, happen to have a pottery kiln, so I cooked them in a pottery kiln. That could perhaps have just been either bricks cut at 45 degrees or just clay stacked up at a 45 degree angle. And there's the finished, um, I basically burned off the wood forms that I had uh, created for them. And this shows them in place. And here also it shows the, the stack up of the fire bricks so I could continue stacking the red bricks on top of them. Uh, I had put this little off jet in here just to create increase the surface area of the stove and so that I had I was be removing the heat from the smoke before sending it up to the exhaust and, and so there was a calculated amount of 95 square feet that I was trying to hit and so now this off jet also stabilized this wall on this side. The back wall had about a four foot run here with no uh, bracing and so I put a couple of these bricks across to which are a homemade brick made in a wooden form and then fired in my my kiln. So they're just showing going going up and I just I needed to get up to six feet tall and so I just kept on going up and up and up and up. I, end up doing about two rows every day, every evening uh, for a couple weeks. So now I'm up at about the five foot level and I, you can see my one tie brick and then I had, maybe this is like the four foot level I think, and I had to put another tie brick in. And now I'm up to, at the five foot level at the top of the uh, riser. You can really clearly see the one inch uh, ceramic insulated blanket and then the uh, little sheet metal form for it and then I filled around all the sides with the uh, perlite and, and these bricks are here just to serve as a backstop for the 
perlite fill, which which I really didn't need, but it was mostly there as insurance and to help the, the riser stay in position. And you can see that I I put the width between my bricks at more or less the width of the of the size of the riser, uh, so that it would be easier for me to span across this distance with a with a, a bricks should I want to cover the top with bricks. So now I'm up at the full height. I filled in around the riser with with perlite mixed with clay and I'm ready to put the lid on. Here's another view down the inside of the thing at the, with, the, with it being six feet tall. And now I've put the lid on. So it's uh, one inch ceramic boards, ceramic fiber boards, CFBs, and I just, the bricks on the top are just to sort of make sure it stays in place and doesn't get bumped off. And I used clay uh, mixed with sand, uh, play sand, for all the joints here, which is another reason why I only could do two layers at a time because I needed to give them time to dry in between putting down the rows. And so that's, I used a five to one of clay, fire clay to sand. I think three to one is also recommended. But the five to one I, I use seemed to be fine. And there's my jury rig door. I happened to have a power outage and so I quickly rigged up the door there because otherwise I was ready for it and we heated for it like a day and a half with, like this. And then also I've put in the uh, ceram same ceramic board on the top surface here and then holding it down with uh, fire bricks and filled in between with uh, perlite between the red brick and the fire brick. And then just a view of it burning where you can clearly see the uh, secondary air feed right here. And then this is two, this, this is a little high right now, but it, the prescribed height is two inches up for my eight inch batch box riser situation. And then this, this shape here gives me the right primary air. So this would be the secondary air, and then the primary air is, and, and the velocity of the air coming through here keeps this thing clear. Like it'll, it'll pull, I was worried the the ashes might kind of stuff this or get it partially clogged, but the, the velocity of the air coming through here is enough that it, it, it keeps it clear. And so it also makes for a simpler build that way. And then this is what I finally ultimately ended up with uh, in order to force the air to, the hot air to come up through the uh, vents and above, in the floor above it, I went back to the hung, hanging the sheet metal around it and that looks to be working just fine to force all the air up into the regular house. And so this is a much more stable heat profile than my previous 55 gallon barrel stove. It, it, uh, it doesn't heat up the hot, if a house is as fast, and, but it also is more steady so it, 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 you don't get overheated and the heat is spread out longer. I should be getting a more efficient burn, hotter burn, so I, I could conceivably be getting four times the efficiency out of this thing. I, I'm, I'm telling people it's probably twice as efficient, and, and, and we'll see how it works out. Um, but it, I should be getting both a more efficient burn and then also capturing the heat before it goes up the, the chimney and re retaining it. So I should be getting a couple of improvements here. So I hope that was interesting for you. Thank you for your time.